Let's change the pace a little and cross to the state. Sky News contributor Kristen Tate joins me from Boston. Kristen, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Look, Donald Trump has made history again, becoming the first president to be tried on criminal charges. That's right. That's what everybody's talking about here in the United States today. The first criminal trial of a president. Uh, Trump is expected to be in the courtroom for a lot of this trial. And... Um, you know, he's doing all of this while he's running for president. Keep in mind, Anika, this trial could last into June. So Trump sent out, sent out a message on Truth Social accusing uh, the Manhattan DA of election interference. And there's a lot of weight to that argument because we are uh, getting closer and closer to this election. And this is a tactic by the left to keep him off the campaign trail. Of course, this president, uh, Donald Trump, rather, our former president, uh, holds these massive rallies. That's a big way he rallies his base. He's fantastic in person uh, with, with speaking, with, with voters and has that electric energy about him. So by pulling him physically off the campaign trail, that could really harm him leading into November. Yeah, that's a, a good point. And you said that this trial could go into June. That's only just months away from the election. We know that Trump has a huge base, but what happens if he is indeed convicted? Will it hurt his presidential ambitions? It will probably hurt him with independent voters. Um, polls show that if he's convicted, independent voters uh, will be scared uh, to, to kind of vote for Trump and pull the lever. But I think it could actually end up rallying his base even more and really getting out that right wing vote um, more so. So it, it's hard to say what would actually happen if he were convicted. Um, I, I think, though, uh, aside from an actual conviction, the left has several other goals. Even if they don't get a conviction, they are, again, pulling them off the campaign trail. They are attempting to control the news cycle leading into the election by making this election a referendum on Trump being, you know, a threat to democracy, as they love to say, and distracting voters away from Joe Biden's absolutely abysmal track record. And, um, you know, they're trying to scare away those suburban voters, even if they don't get the conviction, just having those headlines in the news could could shake up some voters who are kind of on the edge, don't love Biden, but don't necessarily like Trump's bombastic personality and um, buy into some of the media headlines about him being a threat to democracy and all of that. Let's talk about some of the polling, because it seems like nothing could actually hurt Trump's popularity. He's going from strength to strength. Yes, that's right. Uh, he is beating Biden by in nearly every poll at this point. It's quite stunning. Um, Trump is just an incredible political animal. You give him any media attention, even if it's negative media attention, and he just goes higher and higher in the polls. I don't know how he does it. Uh, one thing that the left has done, I think, is overplayed their card with Trump. You know, they, they have been screeching for years now that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy and he's racist and he's a thisist and a thatist. And after a while, Danica, I think it just falls on deaf ears. Everybody rolls their eyes and yawns. It's like the boy who cried wolf. You know, their urgency has, lo they've lost all urgency uh, in their cries of, of uh, Donald Trump is so bad, big orange mean man. I mean, everyone's heard it all at this point. And, and I think people realize that these trials are just shams. This is a political hit job. Even, you know, not politically plugged in folks realize that. I walk around my neighborhood here and I talk to my neighbors who aren't really politically plugged in. And even they know it. Even the Democrat voters know it. So the whole thing's a sham. And, and that's hurting the Democrats and, ironically, helping Trump even as these trials move forward. Yeah, well, people are smart enough to make up their own minds in the end. They know who they want to vote for and, and are sick of hearing the same old baseless accusations. But look, let's move on now to pro-Palestine protests. We saw them across Australia yesterday and I honestly don't know what these people aim to achieve by shutting down roads. They actually turn people off their own causes by wreaking havoc in peak hour. But there were also protests in New York with hundreds of people running riot there. What happened? That's right. Um, in New York particularly, but in cities across America right now, you have these left-wing loons who are shutting down highways, preventing people from getting to the airport and all sorts of other shenanigans, screaming about... Um, 
you know, Hamas and, and their anti-Israel, death to America, death to Israel, all the rest of it. This is really off-putting to Americans who see this behavior. They're disgusted by it. And um, it hurts the Biden administration. Biden is in a very bad position right now because on one hand, he wants to uh, cater to his left wing base, who, of course, are very anti-Israel. But he can't really get too harsh on Israel because then he'll alienate the more moderate wing of his base, which is still pretty supportive of Israel. Uh, And then Trump, on the other hand, has been very pro-Israel, and we have a track record to back that up. He was the most pro-Israeli president in my lifetime, certainly. Um, And Americans now have two track records that they can compare. But um, all of these uh, anti-Israel and, frankly, anti-American protests we're seeing right now are putting Biden in a very tough position. And that's why we've seen so much contradictory rhetoric coming out of this administration when it comes to the Israel-Palestine conflict. 